Hi guys! Welcome to today's video and today's video is going to be how I made my uh, raccoon doll. Um, so I tried to make it a realis realistic raccoon this time because I haven't actually done a realistic one. Uh, and then I really like making this one so I'm going to make another one but uh, with the same fur but the green. But anyway this one's just, this video is going to be for the realistic uh, raccoon. So he has a, what, a ball and socket armature for the spine and he's got wire legs, uh, resin hands and a resin head um, and it's all been furred and everything so the video on how I'm dyeing this, I'll get into more detail when it's at that time in the video, will be on my Patreon. Um, but as always, uh, this one is looking for a home and my patrons have first uh, early access to purchasing any dolls. So if she already hasn't been adopted, then you can head over to creaturesnet.com. And if you want to know how I made them, then just keep watching. Alright, so I'm starting off casting the resin bits for the doll and I use EasyCast um, from a company here called Barnes um, and it's a quick set of resin. Um, it's two part, equal two part resin um, and I'm pouring it into my silicon moulds that I have made. So I've originally sculpted the head out of monster clay and then I have moulded them in silicon and then now I'm casting them in resin. Uh, so if you want a quick resin, um, uh, easy resin tutorial and mould making tutorial, I have them in my shop at creaturesofnat.com um, and it comes in a PDF and a zip file. So if you want to know how I mould and cast them, then head over there. Next, I'm just drilling some bits in uh, for the armatures uh, and also I have armature tutorials in my shop as well if you want to know how I do that. So I use just a little Dremel tool um, uh, and it's just what I have so it's um, pretty easy. So once everything's been cast, this is what I have. Uh, for this one, I didn't um, cast any glass eyes in it. I just um, cast regular eyes because they're going to be painted black. So um, there's not really much point because you can achieve like a glossy coat anyway and you can do that by various different varnishes so I have a video on my channel where I talk about the varnishes that I use and if you want a little bit more I have on my patreon as well a post about varnishes um, so I'm just using a, a water-based acrylic paint called chroma Krill. Uh, it's nothing fancy uh, it's a pretty cheap paint um, but you can use any paint that you have in your local craft stores um, and I also prime my uh, resin pieces before I end up painting them with a primer. Uh, there's a couple of different primers that you can use but I usually use a um, primer called um, Dervy and Matisse and it's just like a canvas primer but it works really well for resin uh, and it comes in a big um, little pot so you get quite a lot of it and it really lasts a long way. Um, and I usually do a couple of coats of paint, uh, so I usually do the first one and then I'll put the doll together and then I'll do another one uh, and that usually gives a nice finish and it also um, brings out the features once I've applied all the fur to the face and I've also just mapped out where I want the little uh, eye mask to be uh, just with paint so it might look a bit messy right now but um, it'll all get covered up in fur very shortly. Right, the same deal with the feet, so I've also cast these in resin, so raccoons have little black um, palms, so I'm just going in with the same sort of paint um, and just giving a couple of coats over this section. Uh, you can also do a varnish over it to um, protect the paint a little bit more from any scuff damage or anything, uh, so that's why it's always important as well to prime your resin pieces because it can be quite slippery and easily chipped off. Um, so the primer helps that just set onto the resin. Moving on to the fur and I had this fur sitting around for quite a long time. Um, I had a lot of it so I've used a couple of, of times on different dolls but I've never actually made a raccoon with it so I thought well it's about time to make a raccoon. Um, so I am drawing out the patterns of the raccoons. I've made these patterns myself. I'm not a fantastic pattern maker, so uh, that's why I haven't made any uh, videos or anything about it, because um, it's something that I'm still working on, um, because I'm always not 100% happy with um, the patterns that I make. Um, so yeah, I'm just drawing it out on the back side of the faux fur. With just a Sharpie, um, you can use like, um, a chalk 
or anything like that would work totally fine. I use that sometimes as well on darker fabrics. Um, but yeah. So now I'm just cutting out the piece off the bigger piece of faux fur so I can cut it out again. <laughs> uh, and I'm using a small pair of sharp scissors for this. Um, and I like to use that because I have more control. Um, I've actually got a video that I'm doing for my um, patron about it. So if you want to know more, you can head there as well. And here's a close look at the fur. And you can see how much it actually looks like raccoon fur. Um, so it's really, really perfect for it. Uh, it's a really good quality as well. Um, so I'll probably make some more things out of this too. So now I'm just cutting out all of the patterns individually uh, with those small scissors. Um, and when I've cut all these out, I will be pinning it together and sewing it up on a sewing machine. And always be careful to just cut the backing and not the pile of the fur, otherwise you'll lose all of the tufts at the end of it and you don't want that. Right, so pinning everything together, so I pin things fur side together uh, and I just have a, a cheap sort of set of pins, you don't need anything special. Um, but yeah, pinning fur side together, uh, making sure to take out the pins when you're sewing along the way because uh, you don't want your sewing machine needle to hit the pins and break the needle. Um, and always remember to tuck the fur into uh, the inside when you're pinning just so you don't run over it when your sewing and I can make a um I might make a patreon post about that as well and um just tips on sewing faux furs so um if you're interested in that you can uh head over there too and I don't have a schmancy um sewing machine this one's quite a number of years old um it's by the brand brother so good Japanese brand um and never have a problem with this it just sometimes struggles to get through thicker fabrics but um, I mean, I think any sewing machine would happen, it would do that. Alright, so this is what we have once it's all been sewn up. I have the back end open so I can flip it the right way around. I also have the legs open and also the neck area so I can uh, attach the fur to the head um, with some fabric glue. So I'm going to flip it the right way around now. And I always use a um, just a wooden tool to help coax um, the legs through uh, over a metal tool just because the metal tool can actually rip the fabric and the wooden tool doesn't really it's not sharp so it um, doesn't rip the back of the fabric so if you rip it then you have to sew it back up again um, so yeah I just get a little bit, a little bit of a, a poke with the um, wooden tool um, if it's too hard then maybe just go back and unstitch a few stitches so you can poke it through and this is what we have once it's been all flipped through so you can so sort of see the shape of a raccoon here um, but now I'm going to put the armature in um, and measure it up and stick everything together Right, so once the armature's in, I've got the head ready to attach to the fur and I just use a fabric paint from my local craft store. It's nothing fancy. Um, this one is from Riot. I don't know that they stock this anymore for some reason, um, but I thought it was a good faux fur, but I found a comparable one at Spotlight um, here in Australia, but you can find something that's very, very similar in a craft store near you. I'm sure that would stock it. It's not that expensive and usually comes in a bottle like this and it is usually clear. Um, you could also try some, anything that says fabric glue. Um, it's all sort of the same thing, um, but I prefer this tacky one just so um, over like thinner ones because it actually helps adhere the fur and it will stick there while it's drying. Whereas um, like more liquidy ones sort of uh, peel away from what you're sticking so I always prefer a tacky one. Now it is time to sew up the all the loose ends so I'm using a ladder stitch here to sew up my legs on all the rest of it. Uh, I have a ladder stitch video on my channel that you can check out if you're not sure what it is. Uh, so once I've sewn all this up I use that same tacky fabric glue um, to stick the uh, piece to the hand um, and, I, and I usually leave this to dry overnight just so everything's adhered properly um, because if you put any pressure on it it ends up pulling away from the resin and then you have to glue it all over again so I leave it overnight to dry properly um, before I move on to anything else. Mm -hmm. 
And after I've done that and put all the stuffing in and sewn it all up, uh, I then move on to furring the face and then giving it a trim. And once I've given it a trim, I just make sure I get all of the fur out of the eyes and all of the areas that uh, all the little fur particles went into or any glue or anything's gone into. Um, and then I can go and like I said at the start, repaint all of the sections that I painted. Um, so once I've done that, uh, it depends what you want to do, but there's no right or wrong way of doing this. I go in with a brush and actually paint in some of my um, uh, features. So I have a video on my Patreon if you're watching this. It's up on Patreon right now for my $5 and above patrons. And it is the whole process of painting in the tail bits. Uh, so if you're interested in that, um, do check it out. I will also have a video of how I've done these whiskers going up next week for my $5 and up again. So if you're interested in that, um, yeah, head over there and see if you uh, want to join. Um, and so this one, little one will be available in my shop. Uh, if it already hasn't been adopted, you can head over to creaturesofnat.com and see if there is, um, if he's still available. If not, um, you can support me on Patreon you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat and I want to thank my patrons for supporting me as well I really do appreciate it and I hope you like this video so I will see you next week bye